If you fail this mission, your campaign ends and you just wasted 15 hours of your life, or to be more precise, my life, because today I reached the final few levels after an eventful climb where my temper sometimes got the better of me. You may be wondering why I'm dressed like a clown. Well, it's because this is what I deserve after what happened. You see, sniper rifles are something of a rarity in freelancer mode, so when you unlock one, it's a special salivating moment. A moment that I ruined in Colorado when I threw my briefcase at an enemy who went splash in the pond along with my case containing the sniper rifle and recovering it was impossible. After that, I went to the bank for another syndicate mission, sneakily storing an explosive device for later, but upon retrieving it... Fortunately, that was not a campaign ending mission, but I decided that if I was going to act like a clown, I may as well dress like one. Oh yeah, and all the missions on today's episode are alerted territory, so failing one means game over for good and you can't save your game either. Three targets to eliminate and a heist to get some cash for a new sniper rifle. The underpass conveniently contained a loot crate by the busker, but it felt as if the ceiling would collapse at any moment. It appeared that my helpers from the outside were clued in on my joke of a career when these offerings were revealed. A rusty old nail, a faulty car battery and a stinky chef's knife with rotten onion fragments still visible on the blade. I chose the battery as I'd never clobbered someone over the head with one before, so why not? But before the assassination would come first a heist to empty a safe. Oh wait, if the coin didn't land in the hat it wasn't intended for you. Yoink! If you ever run into a clown in a parking lot, it's probably not going to end well, especially if the tactics for getting that sweet money from the safe involves turning out the lights. What's the big idea? As tempting as it was to become a security guard myself, I stuck with the clown because I hate my life, but also I enjoyed the warmth of the vibrant wig as it caressed my unloved head. Still a guard inside, but I couldn't allow him to interrupt me cracking a safe, so I told him to stop screwing around. Don't worry, it takes a long time to die from a wound like that, so I put him somewhere that nobody would think to look. Aha! A mystery! Find the three clues to crack the safe, or just use explosives. The guards cared about this massive explosion for all of about 10 seconds, then decided that they didn't get adequate hazard pay as compensation. I thought it might be fun though to go and say hello. Looking good, man. Looking good. Wow, this guy was really polite. I internally vowed that if things escalated during this mission, his life would be spared. Get out of my face. On second thoughts, this scumbag dies first. Target numero uno was wandering around in the open, not an easy kill without initiating John Wick mode, so I tried something that has been working really well in Dead Island 2, waited for them to walk towards the sidewalk fountains, and left a car battery in wait. I, I, I don't know why I expected a 12 volt battery to electrocute someone to death, so we'd have to... <clears throat> As if there was ever any doubt, get wrecked, target down, this mission was going to be the smoothest one yet. Freak. Now if you know this channel, then you already know what comes next. Rudeness has a cost, and this man was about to pay a steep price. Following my target, it appeared that while he was happy to label me a freak, he was walking around peeing inside all the trash cans. If the garbage man needed money, then money he would have, or so he thought. Operation Pied Piper was underway. Drop the coin, pick it up. Drop the coin closer to the dark basement, pick it up. It was working, uh, until it wasn't. You start throwing shit around, and then what? Oh well, plan B, to the black market supplier for inventive ways to educate the garbage man on his street manners. Whilst the tactical shotgun was tempting, the oil canister would deliver the required justice. For a moment I pondered how a full oil canister ever fit inside the suitcase, but the cunning plan was underway with our victim being unable to resist the trash. He'd walk up to it and then slip on the oil. But he didn't slip and my anger got the better of me. I'd come up empty and I happened to have an empty case so I furiously donated it. <laughs> Okay, so a nasty habit of mine is checking over my handiwork, and this was a bad time for it to bite me in the wig. But bite me it did, and I was hunted. Forced back down to the parking lot, I remembered that failing this mission would be the end of my campaign, so I decided against doubling up on revenge against- Get out of my face! Having said that, I am a fickle chap. By the way, I discovered that my screwdriver was becoming an interdimensional weapon. I wanted to look at the garbage man one more time because what would come next might affect his ability to maintain eye contact. Well, at least he died doing what he loved. Two rude people and one syndicate member down, two targets to go. Now, it would be silly and childish to walk in front of a news reporter while they were filming their segment, so we're going to chalk this down to me not seeing them. Right, cut! There was some jerk in the frame. 
My target was floating from bench to bench, wandering around the same area, pretending as if he had nothing going on with his clipboard. So I prepared another electrocution by masterfully mixing cable and water. But after an hour, my target had no intention of walking anywhere near my trap. After all that effort, I couldn't let this work of art go to waste, so let's just say there was a whoopsie-daisy. <laughs> keys to a speedboat were in the shack so now I had an escape route next to the clipboard man. I'd go deal with the other syndicate member and come back later. She was in a very public space and I was out of patience. Yes, I, I know that bricks aren't lethal but you'll never forget it once one breaks over the back of your skull. Then there was, well, a, a, an incident in the aquarium but it was quickly resolved and we parted as friends. However, our syndicate target was to depart this earth and my magic screwdriver was lost forever made my way to the exit, still unable to solve the puzzle of how to quietly dispose of this final enemy and I came up with If your target won't come to you, then bring the exit to the target. Unfortunately, the waters were a little choppy and I puked on someone's nice leather seats, but I set the boat on fire so the owner would avoid having to clean up such a disgusting mess. The stakes were rising now and my Coco the Clown act wasn't going to work this time as I spawned inside the lion's den, deeply upset that I'd have to remove my wig. <laughs> it was almost over before it started, I'd been rumbled by another guard and I had to hope he was alone. Which he was, so as I tossed my foes to the sea, I admired the Minnie Mouse shorts as they matched my clown costume perfectly. Three targets to destroy, but as I confidently strode through the fortified grounds of this Argentinian estate, I realised that my first syndicate target was one of the guards, and he wasn't going anywhere. The cannon seemed like the obvious choice, but there were two problems. One, it wasn't loaded, and two, even if I somehow loaded it, I didn't know if I could move the thing far enough to achieve my goal. I raked through the attic and found what I needed, but upon returning to the cannon, I realised that a beady-eyed watcher wouldn't tolerate the gunpowder plot and it could be my Minnie Mouse shorts floating away in the South Atlantic Ocean. To carry out this plan with complete finesse, I went with a posh umbrella and hurled it at my assailant. I shouted, here comes the thunder, clueless guard! Guess you could say I, I, I just threw shade at him. With the cannon free from prying eyes, I loaded it and as suspected, no matter how many times I screamed for it to pivot, <laughs> this wouldn't be enough. Turned out that I found further use for the umbrella and the cannon still had a chance of seeing action after all. Wait here, and I'll look into that one. Sadly, with all the excitement, I panicked and made for the nearest cupboard, which would be fine if someone hadn't walked into the room at that exact moment, and my cover was blown. That vacant look was the reason I became a hitman, but he was perfectly fine until I snapped his neck. A shootout seemed inevitable at this point, guards everywhere, I ran around the building hoping to come up with a plan, but instead ran into a room where I couldn't have found a better clone of myself, Lawyer 47. Wow. I know, I'm better looking, but still. Now I could move forwards to my next target, but not without taking my new pal Brolly along for the adventure. Moving through the compound, there was some kind of soiree in full swing. My targets were both in and around a fermentation atrium, or as I like to call it, a Friday night factory. I breezed past the back of the bar and the staff even uttered pleasantries on my way, probably because lawyers for criminal organisations need a constant supply of wine to manage their fear. The dreaded green lights of CCTV were an unwelcome wall between myself and the syndicate, but he didn't realise that Brolly was about to introduce herself. Hello. It wasn't a clean kill, but I had it covered. I tried to chat to Brawly about her performance issues, but she was silent, so I considered taking her to a therapist after this mission because clearly she was having trouble opening up. Believe me guys, if I could call a taxi, I would. The final target was on the atrium floor, but as I went to the balcony for a closer look, Access denied. While I'd been down this road before, I didn't care. Remote controlled explosive ducks were effective and I couldn't afford to fail this mission. So GG easy Mr. Winemaker, you're corked. But he wasn't corked. The duck missed and my suspicious behaviour hadn't gone unnoticed. I wasn't getting down there without a change of disguise and, when possible, I choose a target who is irritating and there's nothing more irritating than someone humming in a public bathroom. <laughs> Take that, innocent bystander! Take that, Mr. Hummer! Now I had clearance to get where I needed to be. A quick trip to the loot crate and a more precise explosion would end this syndicate member for good, until I realised I'd just thrown a flashbang. Oh well, two attempts on his life on the same day and apart from some temporary blindness, he wasn't phased. I went for the old wrench distraction and it was completely useless. But hopefully my sabotage on the wire was successful because it was my favourite time of the day, wine o'clock. The stage was set and my target was near the faulty wires, so I flipped the switch. 
Uh, yeah, a, a few more people got caught in that than, than I thought they would. Well, I guess I shouldn't whine about it. The mission was a success, and so was the one after that, but uh, we, we don't need to talk about it. Which brings us to the final mission of our syndicate hunt. I'd been through some tough levels before, but this was ridiculous. Nine suspects to narrow down and a single mistake at this point was unthinkable. This time, I had to control my temper no matter what anyone said to me. There were lookouts everywhere and if they spotted me, this would turn into a shoot 'em up that I could not win. Luckily for me, I had a very forgettable face and could disappear into any crowd. This was a reasonable vantage point, so I whipped out the suspect camera and began to whittle down the list. Glasses, earrings, necklace and black hair. No, not you. Definitely not you. If I waited long enough, I could get eyes on all of them. What's a weird, sad clown? I'm not sad. I'm so super happy that I could hug you right now so hard that your feet won't even touch the floor. Calmness prevailed and it only happened inside my mind. Back to the suspect hunt and I crossed three more names off the list. Eventually though, I found one that perhaps fitted the description, but I needed to get a closer look. Your wig, oh, I mean hair, is spot on. Finally, someone who understood me. It's a shame that his life choices have led him to me as I had something special planned for today. On the main floor, I surreptitiously snapped a pic with the prime suspect now in my sights. She was spending a lot of time at the buffet, so to the maintenance cupboard I would go to gently sedate the cleaning lady, pick up some rat poison for the potential syndicate leader, and a gas grenade that I'd never seen before. My heart was pounding through my chest at the thought of ending the syndicate's reign, but then... Son, put on some real clothes. Get a Put on some real clothes, you say. Get a real job, you say. Yeah, this is my job, you rich! Oh, it was a dream. Uh, the mind is a powerful tool, but a terrible master. I couldn't tamper with anyone's food or drink while dressed like a clown. The only people allowed to use any additives would be the waiting staff, and as everyone was dressed the same, the toilet staff would be just as good. With no cupboards around, I was unsure if this lady might stumble upon the unconscious attendant, so we weren't taking any chances. At least when they both woke up, the world would be a better place, because I was about to take my target down. There she was doing some sort of handover. Another tell that this was possibly the leader of the entire organization. Where's the package? I got it. This was sounding more and more like the boss, so I waited for an opportune moment and added something quite unpleasant to the red wine. Then it was a simple waiting game, which is when I started to wonder if I was targeting the wrong person because there was another handover. I trust the money is being wired as we speak, but I don't want to come back and start breaking the bones. Relax. Everything is good. Surely nobody threatens the leader of the entire syndicate. Maybe I'd made a terrible mistake and the real leader might be on the upper floor somewhere else. However, I'd have to take care of this now as the plan was in motion and worse than that, our poisoned criminal was headed straight for the very bathroom where my disguise change happened. I had to hope she went for the cubicle on the left. A bodyguard tried to follow us in, but his client wouldn't be coming back out. <laughs> Then something happened that I did not expect. No, no, not, not the poo particles. I, I, I just killed the syndicate leader. They were finished. All I had to do was survive and escape. But the bodyguard decided that this was taking too long and came for a look. So I helped him out with some bathroom hygiene. I quickly moved the baddies to the other cubicle to give me the best chance of walking out undiscovered. But then another syndicate member needed to go pee pee and it changed everything. Mixing up my silenced pistol for a tranquilizer gun was a mistake easily made, but quickly rectified. Now I had a chance to call all the other suspects, get them in here for a handover meeting, and then the world would be told that these mighty criminals drank toilet water before their tickets were punched. Was this risky? Very. Was it worth it? We were about to find out, as in they came and the gas grenade came out to play. Apparently, it only made one of them want to puke, which tilted me, and explosives were used instead. Unfortunately, everyone in the building heard that and were now aware of what I'd done, and a syndicate lookout came to investigate. What she would find was a phone that I had booby-trapped. I just guaranteed her tinnitus for life, but now the real pain could begin with a vial of highly volatile nitroglycerin. But she wasn't supposed to run towards me at the last minute. Yikes! You know, not living at the end may have technically meant a game over, but the way I see it, I was an artist, still perfecting my craft, and soon enough, I'd paint my masterpiece. Thanks for watching, goodbye.